Welcome to Spartan Sports Report. New season and football just two days away from Spartan Stadium against New Hampshire. Justin Allegri and Kevin Richardson with you on our first episode, which will be a preview episode. We'll talk offense, defense, special teams, and we'll also hear inside the Spartans team from our reporter, Jonathan Wald. Uh, first, Kevin, let's, let's go straight to the offense. Uh, some question marks from this team, but a lot of good returning core players for this Spartans offense. Uh, the biggest thing, probably, Al Borges, new offensive coordinator for this team. We saw what they could do in the scrimmage. You know, it was a scrimmage uh, in terms of quarterback play. What will Coach Borges bring differently to this team? Well, I think with Coach Borges, you've got a guy that's well-traveled in college football, right? There hasn't been much that he hasn't seen, and I think the the pressure of saying, hey, we were 3-9 and nine last year, we've got to right the ship and get going, I think a guy like that is just kind of, hey, look, here's the plan. We're going to work the plan. I think that's the first thing he brings to the table. And then, of course, you know, he's got an offense where he feels like he can score a lot of points and doesn't get married to one thing or the other, meaning he doesn't say, hey, we're going to run the ball or we're going to pass the ball. We're going to do we're going to do what works. Well, the biggest question mark for him coming into this season was the quarterback. Joe Gray, Kenny right. Potter. It's been narrowed down to two. By the time this airs, we may have a quarterback. Right. Coach Carragher has said we may be choosing our quarterback up to kickoff. So let's just talk over. Joe Gray, great between the numbers last year, between the 20s. Right. Inside the 20s, not so much. Right. Well, if you look at Joe Gray, I mean, the, the number that I always look at when I'm looking at a college quarterback, are you completing 60% of your passes? He was 62% and some change, did a great job there. Nice total yards number, but really the Achilles heel is, you know, he had nine interceptions to complement his 11 touchdown throws. So, again, those turnovers, an issue in the red zone, and then getting the offense into the end zone in the red zone, a, a big issue for San Jose State. But a guy that throws a great ball, if you remember, you go back to the Mike McIntyre era and the David Fales era, David's junior year when he transferred in, it was it was in play up until a week before kickoff. Joe Gray might have been was, was going to be named the starter, and then David kind of came on. And of course, the rest is history with David Fales. So Joe, a guy physically that can get it done. Although I I, I like what kind of happens to seniors. They either they either settle in or feel that sense of urgency. So I think a lot of those things for Joe kind of cleans up in, ter in terms of turnovers for the. And show. perhaps the biggest difference between Joe and Kenny Potter is the ability for Kenny to run. Now we, we've we've seen a little bit of his arm strength. He, he's done it at every level he's played at before. Just an odd delivery. Of the football but he can bring that running element well and, and you know you and I talked with coach Borges about that it's hard to see that in practice or at a scrimmage because right. you're not going to go live with your quarterbacks but yeah a guy if you look at his junior college tape he can run all over the yard with it and make mm -hmm. a lot of plays with his feet and then when you're making plays with your feet sometimes that improves your passing game as a quarterback so it'll be interesting to see who the quarterback is Whoever you've got, you've got to get solid play. They've got to control the tempo. They've got to really deliver the mail, if you will, and make sure that the playmakers get the ball. And there are quite a few playmakers on this offense. There are a lot of playmakers. Let's let's quickly transition to the offensive line who will be protecting these quarterbacks. Uh, up in the depth, depth chart this fall, four sophomores, and four right. sophomores with experience playing in, in college football. It's a young core, but it seems like an improving core. Well, exactly, and anytime you uh, look at your offensive line, you need offensive tackles. Well, you got Wes Schweitzer over on the left, mm -hmm. Nate Velichko over on the right. He's moving out from offensive guard, a big, tall, rangy guy. So when you've got things squared away with your offensive line, everything else will fall into place. And and you know we were watching a little bit of practice this morning. They look great in the one on one. So I think right. you're gonna you're gonna call that a strength of, of the offense, even though you're. You know, you're replacing your center and Dave Peterson, a guy who was, you know, kind of the anchor of that offensive line. But I think that'll be a real strength for the Spartans this well, year. How about the depth, too? Uh, running back last year, Thomas Tucker was out for a good amount of time. Jared Lawson was gone for a good amount of time. Both those guys back, they look healthy, they look ready to go. That'll just help Tyler Irvin and also the wide receivers. There's a good core of wide receivers as well. Well, exactly. Tyler Irvin, 888 yards rushing last year, all purpose yards, almost 1,800 total yards. And if you remember, my only complaint about Tyler Irvin last year was, you know, are we going to have him sell concessions at halftime? <laughs> I mean, you really get worried about wearing that guy out with right. as many touches as he got. Now, in all fairness to him, in the offseason last year, he did a lot of work and was able to hold up to all of those touches and, and not get injured. But again, if you can get him 
just a couple of rests on a, on a long drive, mm. that's going to be a real positive. So Tyler Irvin, your go-to guy, you put him at running back, you put him at receiver, you motion him all over the field. But again, to get those other guys back on the field at running back will be a real positive for the and There offense. are some newcomers as well. Just want to highlight a couple. There, there's, there's a lot to talk about, but just to highlight a couple. Justin Holmes, a player told me, he, he said he looks like a man amongst boys out there. Justin Holmes, wide receiver, redshirt freshman, 6'2", 215. He and I think Josh Oliver, kind of a wild card maybe, right. but a good blocking tight end. No, exactly. And, and, and uh, you know, when you're talking about Holmes, you pointed him out to me at the scrimmage that I came up to the other day. And, again, a fantastic-looking athlete, a guy that will probably do a lot of good things. And that tight end position, you know, Billy Freeman being nicked up last year, if he is healthy, that's a real positive to this offense. And remember, you got our old buddy Tyler Winston out there on the edge that, you know, as a freshman a couple of years ago, didn't even play in the first four games. Hey, we're going to redshirt this guy. And then all of a sudden they play him. Mm. And he looks like he's been around for five years. And he looks great. And he'll make a lot of plays out there on the edge for San Jose State. All right, that's a quick look at the offense here on the season preview edition of Spartan Sports Report. We'll take our first break and talk defense when we return to training camp. I don't think there's any competition between me and you. <laughs> no competition. <laughs> no competition. Spartans football is back. Secure your tickets by calling 408-924-7589 or visiting sjsuspartans.com. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Some things are not what they appear to be. Other things are exactly what they appear to be. The 306 horsepower Lexus IS 350. As aggressive as it looks. See your Northern California Lexus dealer. Welcome back in on Spartan Sports Report as we continue to preview the season upcoming just a couple of days away from New Hampshire here at home. As we talk now defense, your favorite part, Kevin. Right. Uh, Couple of losses, obviously, it, it really key losses, I guess, at each layer of the defense. Uh, you have Rasidi, Hightower, last year Buhajer. Uh, some some replacements uh, needed to, for this defense this year. Well, definitely, and if you know, if you look at how the Spartans finished up last year down in uh, San Diego, right, gave up almost 400 yards rushing on defense, and that's something that's got to be fixed. So up front, you've got to rework things. I think uh, you need you need Popovich to be healthy. I think that's a that's a big deal for this defense this year. At the linebacker level, you go to that second level. Well, you know we've got Christian Tago, one of our favorites, and that's a guy that you can build a defense around. I right. like I like a couple of the younger guys, uh, the Los Banos kid Ginde, in there making a few plays in, in a scrimmage a couple of days ago. So I think you'll be okay at linebacker, and definitely the strength of your defense is going to be on the back end there. Cleveland Wallace the uh, third, Jimmy Pruitt, and Maurice McKnight. Those are three guys. The fourth guy, I think you and I could jump in and play with them. <laughs> I don't they, know about me. <laughs> you know, they close the ball well and do a good job. And, of course, their D coordinator, Greg Robinson, a guy that, you know, has been everywhere, seen a lot of different things, and will continue to adjust and tweak things on the defensive well, side. Well, I, you, you mentioned Gindel. Might, might as well talk some newcomers yeah. here as we will need to see a couple of newcomers. Frank Gindel, first of all, linebacker, freshman, looked pretty good uh, when he when he was playing out there over the scrimmage. Exactly. And if memory serves me correct, he was here in the spring. Correct. Um, you know, graduated early and, and, and drove over Pacheco Pass and, and got going here with San Jose State. And I think a guy that will see the field quite a bit. You know, uh, you know the, the problem when you're young like that is can your body take all of the sure. the beating that Division One football hands out. But at the same time, if you're not a full-time starter, if you're running in there on certain downs, you can make some plays, learn a lot of football. So I, I think he's a guy you'll probably see out on the field quite a bit. And then somebody that you pointed out to me while we were watching that scrimmage, uh, Nick Areglia, who's 
a junior. He's been here yeah. a while, hasn't seen much playing time, but he looked like a physical specimen out there, didn't he? Boy, he really did, and and and, and made a lot of plays. And you know, it was kind of fun to see. Hey, there's some guys that are working their way through this program, spending a lot of time in that weight room over there. Not nearly as much time as you and I, <laughs> but uh, you know, a guy that's that that's going to work himself into some playing time. And that front four needs some help yes. this fall, and he might be a guy that supplies a little bit of that help. Well, that's the biggest question mark coming into the season. It was a tremendous pass defense last year, the best in the country for the Spartans. Right. How will they stop the run? Because teams will try to run on the Spartans' defense. Well, and if you look at how things line up early on with, uh, and we'll, of course we'll, we'll talk about that at length this year, but you know, early on you're playing University of New Hampshire, a spread offense, but then you jump right in against an option offense with the Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. and those are guys that we struggle against the option, you know, pure and simple. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what work was put in in the offseason to be ready to deal with those schemes and, and, and be better against the run. Yeah, number one in the nation against the pass. I'm, you know, I noticed a lot of the players don't spend a lot of time bragging about that. Right. They go, well, gosh, when you're running, you know, the ball for 400 yards against us, obviously you're not going to have to pass. But again, if you have to pass, you, you got a lot to deal with back there on the back end. Now you mentioned that the free safety is the only really question mark, I guess, about the secondary. Uh, what have you seen? Simon Kinnett, Vincente Miles, they're the kind of guys that are going to maybe fill in there. It's kind of still a question mark at this point. You, you know, it looked like to me the other day when we watched the scrimmage, yeah, it was up in the air. Again, you've got your three guys that are go-to guys, and you, and you know that's going to mm -hmm. work. And then, you know, that's, that's maybe something where you're playing a couple guys, right. maybe for the whole season or maybe early on until you find somebody that really settles in. And again, with some of the offenses you're seeing early on, whether it's run or pass, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on that second level. So it, it'll it'll be real apparent really quick. Andre Chachere, we saw him. He was a special teams player last yeah. year in 11 of 12 games. Uh, really looked athletic, quick last year. Now we'll probably see him as a DB as well, coming in and out every once in a while. Well, and, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, special teams. You, you got a lot of these guys that are working their way through special right. teams onto the starting offense or defense, and that's always a positive. And again, as you think about last year and you go, gosh, three and nine, what could have, should have, and all these different things that should have happened. But when you've got that going on, you know you've got some positives working in the program, and and, and hopefully that translates onto your, your starting offense and defense. When we asked Coach Carragher, a player that he knew about but improved the most in camp, Isaiah Irving is who, who he said uh, looks a little bit bigger, looks a little bit stronger. Isaiah Irving, is he going to be the guy? Well, yeah, you know, they, they've got him on the edge, right? Yeah. And getting in there and, and, and making a mess and, and, and doing good stuff. He's just a plain old football player, mm -hmm. right? You get him out there, you know, I think he was outside linebacker in a two-point early yeah. on in his career. Now he's got his hand down in the dirt doing some good things, so you you, you got to like it. You know, San Jose State with a four-man front. You've got four down linemen, three linebackers to do some some quick uh, math for you there. But, you know, the, the, the hard part in Division One football, besides finding offensive linemen, is finding defensive linemen. Right. You can always find a lot of linebackers because you can take a safety that's maybe a step slow, but you can bulk him up and roll him down, and he can play in the box. But D linemen, that's, that, that's a premium right along with the O linemen. So that's always a fight, and uh, need to see him coming on and making some plays. All right, that's a quick preview of the defense this year for San Jose State. We'll take another break and talk special teams and also preview a little bit of this New Hampshire game coming up on Thursday. More to come when we return. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Back on Spartan Sports Report, the season preview edition as we now talk special teams, and we'll also talk a little bit of the schedule as well. But special teams was a glaring, glaring uh, weakness for this team last year. 
Obviously, they bring in Dan Farino. He and Al Borges, boy, they, they know each other really well. Right. Yeah. Uh, but for Coach Farino, first and foremost, needs to get this special teams together. Boy, you're exactly right. Of course, uh, Coach Borges and Coach Farino, kind of a traveling road show, if you will. <laughs> you know, you wonder if they got a camper out back. They just stay right by the stadium. But, uh, yeah, you've got to get special teams from being a negative into a positive, or at the very least, it's, it's got to be a neutral for you. And if you think about, you know, scheme and all of those different things, I think that's what Coach Farino brings to the table. Well, and there were a few games last year that I think the Spartans may have won or would have been in a position to win had it not been for some special team, special teams miscues. Well, and again, you know, kicking a ball, it, it, it's it's like hitting a golf ball, right? You get a case of the yips, and it, it takes it takes a little bit to been make there. that go away, right? <laughs> uh, and so, you know, you, you, you've got these things going on on special teams that just kind of fed off themselves in a negative way last year, and you're thinking maybe this year it'll, it'll go towards the positive because I know clearly you've got the talent to get that done. Right. Well, Austin Lopez, one of the talented guys, and – he was so confident his first year as a Spartan. Yeah. Last year just, just lacked that confidence. It seems like now he's got that swagger back. He's worked on some stuff, went back home with his kicking coach, got things together, and it seems like he's right again. Yeah, no, he does seem balanced up again. And, and, and I think with him, all you got to do is throw on that film from his freshman and sophomore year and, and realize, hey, I can do this mm -hmm. and just go out and do it. Just kick the ball. Right. And uh, I think you're going to get that from him. He looks really comfortable in fall camp. And, and uh, you know, things have a way of kind of calming down on the special teams side of things when you've got a guy in charge that, hey, I've got a plan. This is what we're going to do, and we're going to go do it. And, you know, talking about the punter, Michael carries those. You know, he struggled a bit last year. And again, you know, true freshman, you kind of feel like you're, you know, you're the, you know, the stand on the inside lane of the Bayshore Freeway, right? <laughs> Even though, hey, you just all you got to do is catch it and punt it. There's a lot going on. And I thought he looked much more relaxed in fall camp also, hitting the ball well, nice loud thump when it comes mm -hmm. out. Of course, that's a real technical term. But, you know, you get that loud thump, that ball's going to go a long ways. And, and I think he's ready, and he looks in great shape yes, also. Yes, and that was the thing last year. We, we saw signs of what he could be last year, and then he had his breakdowns. And I think if he limits that, which he probably will in his second year, right. he will be a, a good punter for this team. Oh, exactly. And, you know, we, we talk about the kickers, but, you know, the, one of the bigger pieces of the whole special teams formula is, you know, what are your linebackers and defensive backs mm. and tight ends when they're out there on special teams? Are they trying to make a play or are they just kind of running down the field? Right. And I think you're going to see a different group of Spartans out there on specials this year. You know, having an idea where the ball is instead of running down the field hard and you're running this way and the ball's over there, I think you're going to see guys closing the ball making some great plays on special teams. And again, you've got a guy like Tyler Irvin that can blow it open as a right. return guy and a few guys behind him that can do the same. So. I look for that movement from being a negative to neutral to a real positive down the stretch. All right, uh, Kevin, we'll, we'll go now to New Hampshire. A couple days away, first yeah. home game. Uh, obviously, FCS team, a good FCS team. Right. A kind of a test out of the gates for this Spartan squad, though. Boy, you, you, you think, you know, I, and I know when I looked at the schedule, University of New Hampshire, you're kind of going, wait, <laughs> is that an online college? You know, you're kind of working through things, and you pull these guys up and realize they're top ten. Right. You know, FCS program every year, and if you're a fan of pro football and Chip Kelly with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, who, of course, you know, made himself famous up at University of Oregon, well, this was his laboratory, if you will, mm -hmm. with that spread offense. So these guys are still doing that. So they're going to run the ball. They're going to throw the ball. They're going to play fast. That's going to be a real challenge uh, opener for San Jose State. All right, that's special teams and the schedule. When we return on Spartan Sports Report, John Wold will have the story of the season with the coaches and players. More to come when we return. Come enjoy a California-grown experience at Unamas Mexican Grill. From our local produce and freshest ingredients to our unique, authentic Mexican dishes and salsa bar, Unamas truly is California-grown. Since the first Unamas opened in San Jose over 20 years ago, we've worked hard to use the freshest local ingredients to make the dishes you love. Because when we care this much about our food, everything is going to taste better, naturally. Una Mas Mexican Grill. We taste better. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. 
The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Report. The newest addition to our program is reporter Jonathan Wolves, who now has a season preview with the coaches and the players. Head coach Ron Carragher enters his third year leading San Jose State football. After a disappointing 3-9 and nine record last year, Carragher will have some new faces on his staff, hoping to help the Spartans move up in the Mountain West standings. Al Borges joins the Spartans as the new offensive coordinator. He worked most recently at the University of Michigan, but was also the offensive coordinator for the undefeated 2004 Auburn team. He brings a style that's def definitely unique. You know, um, he's definitely a type of type of coach. You know, when he he'll definitely won't hesitate to get on you. But you know, he's really understanding, and he you know he he teaches guys, but he definitely likes our input. Adam Stenovich takes over as the new coach for the offensive line, which now boasts two 300-pound tackles. Really sound knowledge, coaching the fundamentals up of that group, and that's a good group. We, we return four guys back. Dan Farino comes in looking to solidify special teams as their new coordinator, as well as coaching the tight ends. The biggest storyline out of training camp is arguably the battle for the starting quarterback position and the different looks the two men bring. Will the accurate pocket passer Joe Gray return to the starting role he earned last season? or will athletic junior college transfer Kenny Potter grab the reins of the offense? Every quarterback has their strengths, and, and Joe, I'll give him credit, uh, he really has improved his footwork, his timing of uh, in the passing game. Kenny is, he's, he's a good passer, great runner. He, he definitely likes, you know, the little scramble drill. He likes um, throwing on the run, and he definitely doesn't feel shy, you know, when the, when the ball's in his hands, you know, when he's running downfield. Whoever wins the starting job, one thing's for sure, they're going to have some weapons to work with. And that starts first and foremost with the Spartan Swiss Army knife of the team, Tyler Irvin. He could play corner, safety, he could play wide receiver, running back, slot, kick returner. Um, and so he's going he's gonna to contribute significantly. Uh, you'll primarily see him at running back. You'll see him in the slot. Whether he's rushing the ball or whether he's catching the ball downfield, uh, Tyler Irvin uh, makes big plays, and uh, he is true game breaker. Irvin finished 2014 with 148 all-purpose yards per game. That's 13th in the country. Joining Irvin in the backfield, running backs Jared Lawson and Thomas Tucker will try to return to the form they had in 2013 after both missed significant time. Other offensive weapons include receivers Tyler Winston, Hansel Wilson, the versatile Tim Crawley, and athletic tight end Billy Freeman. Freeman with room. Tries to hurdle the defender, he does again! No way! Billy Freeman across the 50, and that time he jumped over an upright standing defender. My goodness! A new face to look out for on offense will be redshirt freshman receiver Justin Holmes. Justin Holmes is a physical specimen. You know, he doesn't shy away from contact. Um, if somebody's in his way, you can definitely believe he's going to go try to go right through him. On defense, the Spartan returned cornerbacks Jimmy Pruitt and Cleveland Wallace III to a unit that allowed the fewest passing yards against in the nation. The team's rush defense will have to improve, however, as it allowed 239 yards per game against last season. Linebacker Christian Tago will be counted on to lead the defense to improvement in that area. You know, we definitely want to be a physical defense. I know uh, a lot of people outside sources and stuff say that we can't stop the run. And that, that's one thing we want to prove this year is that our front seven, we're, we're a physical defense and we want to be able to help out our back four. As a sophomore last season, Tago had 96 tackles, which tied him for the team lead. On the line, he'll get some help from tackle Tony Popovich, now in his fifth season, as well as new defensive end Isaiah Irving, who has impressed the coaching staff during this year's camp. The competitiveness is just, just something that I haven't seen in a while here. And it just feeds off with everybody on the team. And once that excitement starts, you can see it. Everybody's flying around, everybody's cheering. You know, sometimes the defense out there, we start singing songs on the field. We start getting, like, the coaches start getting into it. It's just, just something I haven't seen here in a while. And seeing it now, it honestly, it makes, me, if it, it makes me feel really good. And it's just something different. And I feel so, something special is going to happen this year. The Spartans enter the year projected fourth in the West Division of the conference media poll. Their first test will come September 3rd as they host the New Hampshire Wildcats at Spartan Stadium. From training camp, Jonathan Wold, Spartan Sports Report. Thanks, Jonathan. We'll take another break. More to come on Spartan Sports Report when we return. Some things are not what they appear to be. Other things 
are exactly what they appear to be. The 306 horsepower Lexus IS 350. As aggressive as it looks. See your Northern California Lexus dealer. Come enjoy a California-grown experience at Una Mas Mexican Grill. From our local produce and freshest ingredients to our unique authentic Mexican dishes and salsa bar, Una Mas truly is California grown. Since the first Una Mas opened in San Jose over 20 years ago, we've worked hard to use the freshest local ingredients to make the dishes you love. Because when we care this much about our food, everything is going to taste better, naturally. Una Mas Mexican Grill. We taste better. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Report. That does it for this week's episode. Once again, two days away from kickoff here at home against New Hampshire. September 3rd, kickoff at 7 o'clock. Tickets are available by calling 408-924-7589 or visiting sjsuspartans.com. No TV for the game, but you can listen to these two. Do the call on 1590 AM KLIV. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you next time.